Welcome Gates of the City and all those who are watching. Tonight we're continuing on the topic, the enemy of wrong thinking. You know, the way that we think shapes our whole world. We live in the world, but we live in our own world, which is the way that we think. Your world and the world that you, you live in personally, that's the way that you think. Every one of us have to change the way that we think and have to embrace the fact that our thinking must change, it must change forever. For the rest of your life, the one thing that is sure is change. And if you don't change your thinking and you stay with old ways of thinking, old habits, old ideas, you stay with those and, and it's going to limit your success and your ability to evolve into what God created you to do and to accomplish. So I want to share with you three or four just verses of scripture and, and kind of build a little platform here for you to understand what we're talking about, the enemy of wrong thinking and, and how that wrong thinking is, is an enemy and it works against you. And, and sometimes we, we can think that we're thinking correctly. We can, we can imagine that we are. Uh, we, we think that maybe everything is okay when it's really not. And, and it's so much of it is based on the way that we perceive what our perception is of things in life. So I want to I give you a few verses of scripture tonight to explain my point. In 2 Corinthians 4, in verse 3, it says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, because they don't believe. Now, in this passage of Scripture, the word gospel is, is really God's word. Um, and, and, and I'm going to read a, a couple other verses, and I'm going to come back to this. But gospel is, is good news. You know, there's all types of news out there in the world. And, and everywhere you look, there's information. We live in an information highway that, that's out there. And I mean, it's going 90 to nothing. And, and, you know, in all of that information are ideas. And, and everybody wants to convince you to buy their product, uh, to get on board with the way their perception is of something. Politically, people are after you voting for them and, and, and understanding their platform and the way that they think everywhere. But, but in, in this passage of Scripture, it's talking about the Word of God, the gospel, the good news. And if it's veiled, if it's not being revealed, then it's because the God of this world or this system, the devil himself, is blinding us and keeping us from understanding God's way of thinking. Now, I'm going to read two other verses, and then I'm going to come back to this. In Proverbs 23, 7, just the first part of that verse, it says, For as a man thinks, a man or a woman thinks in their heart, so are they. As a person thinks, that's the way that they are. So, you know, somebody can tell you, you know, you can, you can deliver a speech to a group of people. Everybody can come and tell you it was great. But if you think it was bad, it was bad. Because you'll go home, you'll leave the meeting or wherever you're at, and, and you'll convince yourself that it was no good because you don't see yourself as a good speaker. Other people can tell you that. You know, um, you know the, the enemy can lie to you in your life based on your past that, that you're a loser and you're always going to be a loser. People can tell you, you know, you're, you're, you're really good at something and you're good at this or that. And, and yet, if in your thinking you believe you're a loser, then that's what you are. As a man thinks in his heart, as a person thinks in their heart, that's the way they are. And, and, and so, so what that shows us is that how I think can either be an adversary for me or it can be an enemy for me. And tonight we're talking about the enemy that wrong thinking is in our life. And that's why we need to be on the ship of change and never get off of it. 
I need to be open. I'm not talking about just believing everything that people say. I'm talking about believing God's word. Now, I'm going I'm to show you in a greater way that in the next verse that I'm going to read to you how vitally important that my source of belief comes from God and his word. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds, that all the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, I'm going to read this again. By faith we understand that all the worlds were framed by the Word of God. God framed the worlds. He framed it all. He created it all. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He didn't just like, at the last minute, come up with the thought, oh, I think I'll say light. No, he had a plan. He had a way of thinking. He knew what he wanted to say. And when he said it, there was light. When God created animals, he spoke those animals into existence. He he, he created them with what he said. The, the, all, all, the, all the vegetation on the planet, all the fish in the sea, God created all of those. Everything that was created was directly, or you can say indirectly, related to God. Did God build this pulpit right here that I'm standing at? No, but indirectly He did, because everything came from Him. The wisdom that a person had to create this pulpit actually came from God, whether they acknowledge it or not, because there is no wisdom, there's no creative idea that's out there that is original to you. It all starts with God. So the worlds were framed by the Word of God, and individually we're learning to frame the world that we live in with the Word of God. You'll never frame your world and change the way you think so that you think like God without framing it with God's Word. The worlds were framed by the Word of God. We have to frame our world by the Word of God, but we have to be open to make the changes in how we think. Now let's go back to that 2 Corinthians verse, 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. He said, but if our gospel, in other words, the Word of God, if it's veiled, if it's covered up, uh, if, if, if I can't see clearly what God is trying to get over and to reveal to me, it's why. It's because there's a God of the system in the world out there, the thinking of the world. See, there's these two thinkings going on. It's God's way of thinking, and it's the enemy's way of thinking. And he works overtime, the enemy does, to try to convince you that God's way won't work for you. But I'm telling you today, God's way will always work for you. I don't care care what it looks like. God's way will always work for you. But, But it will not work if you don't make a quality decision to develop a relationship with God. But that relationship with God has to be through the understanding and the revelation and the enlightenment of his word. You'll never know God apart from his word. You're not going to just know God by things just kind of falling out of the sky for you. God is God. He can do whatever he wants to do. But in the Bible, in the word of God, he said that the way to him is through the word, through the living word, Jesus Christ. But it's through his words. If, I'm, if I am meeting you today, if, if, if you were in front of me and I was shaking your hand and we were talking and, and, and we were getting to know each other, we would be getting to know each other because we're talking to you by our words, right? Uh, if we just stood there and looked at each other, we wouldn't get to know each other because there's, there, there's no exchange going on with words. Well, God's word And what God thinks about things is in the Bible itself. So I've got to take all those words and allow them by the Holy Spirit to to be revealed to me 
so that I can understand the way God thinks about every single thing in life. Some people say, well, you know, I, I, I ask God about things in this area, but I've got this over here covered. Well, that area you have covered, you may think it's going to be okay for a season, but at the end of the day, if God's not involved in that, you're set up for disaster. It's just the way it is. Because God wants to develop our faith and trust in Him that He can reveal to us, He can cause the gospel to be revealed to us, enlightened to us, so that the wrong way of thinking can change and His way of thinking becomes a part of us. Remember, the Proverbs verse I just read to you said, as a man or a woman thinks in their heart, so are they. So I've got, if, if, I, if I think I'm a loser, I've got to change. But the only way that I can change is finding in God's word how he created me to be a winner. And it's all through, from Genesis to Revelation, all through the word of God. It's in there for me, me personally, you personally, that I'm a winner. I was created to win. Not to lose, not to be a loser, but to win. And, and in the Hebrews 11, 3 verse that I just read, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In other words, everything that is made, even today, in here there's a bunch of empty chairs, all these empty chairs in here were created by somebody, started with an idea, started with wisdom about how to create something that a person could, could lean back in and, and sit down in. It came from that wisdom. Um, I, I'm reading notes off of an iPad. Well, when Steve Jobs, you know, started Apple and when he started that, you know, whether Steve Jobs knew God or not, the idea for Apple came from God. There's no original ideas out there. They all come from God. See, so, so it, it, it was the wisdom of God in a man, in a person, that was willing to spend the time and develop something that people had never seen before. Man, I thank God for these iPads, for the iPhones, for all, all the technology that we have. But it all originated from God. So, no iPad made an iPad. In other words, the things that we see created were not created by visible things. They were created by internal things, internal wisdom, internal knowledge, wisdom that comes from God, that, that, that is birthed into ideas and creative ideas. Could, could you, can you come up with an invention like an iPad, like, like an iPhone? I mean, not, in, not necessarily in, in that realm, but in some other realm? Do you have the ability to do that? I, I'm telling you, you do, because every human being on the planet was created in the image of God. Now, let, let me tell you this. We were created to have witty inventions, creative ideas, but to think like God thinks. And, and every person has that wisdom. They have that faith inside of them. Whether a person's born again today or not, it really doesn't matter. It's still in there. The Bible says, on the tablets of every man's heart is written the laws of God, the ways of God, the way God thinks and operates. It's inside of us. And we have the ability to accomplish things in life that are above and beyond anything that we can even ask or think if we allow our thinking to change. If we keep old ideas, old habits, old ways of thinking, and we don't allow the change of who God is and what God wants to do in us to become a part of us, then things are going to stay the same and in a lot of cases they're going to get worse. I'm telling you today, your future is bright if you allow change in your thinking to happen. I'll just say this. I've been saying this a lot since the beginning of the year. But I'm telling you today that God has made a way for you, even if it seems like there's no way. When you think about what God wants to do in and through your life, it's not based on what you see, how you feel, how things appear to be today. Everything that God wants to do in you today and in the future 
is in His Word revealed on the inside of you. Don't forget that. That's really, really important. Everything that God wants to do in your life and see done in your life will come from His Word being revealed and enlightened on the inside of you. And when you see and you begin to change the way that you think, it'll change what you see manifested today and in the future. You know, in the world, the world says, I'll believe something when I see it. God says, your seeing it is in your believing in it. In other words, He wants you to believe what He says even before you see it. The world's way of thinking is, show it to me and I'll believe it. That's backwards with God. That's how you have to change. In, 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 in different examples, in comparisons like that, that's how you have to change. And when we change the way we think, we'll change the things that we see in life. And I'm telling you right now, the sky's the limit to what can happen in and through your life. So this is a good practice. Um, let, let's look at this passage in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 and 9. And I'm going to read this out of the NIV. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. So in other words, the good things like that, think on. Why? Because everything that God is, is good. There's nothing bad about God. If you've ever thought that God did something to you and it was bad, it's a lie. There's a devil out there. That God of the world, of the system that we just talked about a minute ago. He lies to people all the time trying to convince them that God's their enemy. He's the one that's against them. I'm telling you, God is not against you. God is for you. But he said, think on, think about such things. And then he said this. He said, this is the Apostle Paul saying this in Philippians chapter 4. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Another reason that our thinking needs to change is so that we can say things like this to other people. Hey, you know these things that I've been telling you about that you've seen me do and you, you've mentioned things that you like in me, you know, that you're seeing me do? Well, it's because of God. It's because I've changed the way that I think. Notice in this passage, he's saying, you know what? Get your, get your mind off all the negative things, especially the negative things about other people. Get your mind off the negative things and spend time meditating and thinking and thanking God for all the things in the positive realm. And you know, this isn't just, this isn't just positive over negative, but God is a positive God and He's a good God and everything about Him is good. So what He's saying right here is where you've got negative thoughts and bad thoughts and, you know, and, and worried thoughts and fearful thoughts, the only way that those thoughts will go away is you begin to meditate and think on and begin to thank Him for how good that He really is. Meditate on these good things. Find good things to meditate on and not the bad. And He said, put these things into practice that you've seen in me. And He said, then the God of peace will be with you. So if you think this way, what we just read right there, if you think that way, then you'll be at peace. If you don't think like that and you, you keep some of the old stuff, you keep things that, that have been a certain way in your life, then you won't be at peace. If you change the way you think, you'll be at peace. You don't change the way you think, you won't be at peace. That's what he says. I'm just repeating to you. I'm just the messenger tonight telling you what he says. And you know what? There's really no excuse. 
There's no excuse no matter what others do. It's a choice that you and I make to meditate on and change the way we think. Meditate on other things, on positive things, on good things, and let the bad things, the negative things, be removed. The more we do that, the more peace we walk in, and the more we're able to help other people with how to overcome these same types of obstacles. Because you know what? They're real. I mean, they're there. They're in everybody's face all the time, every day. And we have to face these things, but we have to come to the place to realize that it's a choice in our life to change the way that we think. Nobody's going to do it for you. I mean, I'm here to help you tonight in what I'm talking about. Other people will help you. I'm helping people with these kind of things all the time. But God wants you to draw your true help from Him. And when you do, you realize you can actually do this. This is doable. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, this is doable. We can live a life where wrong thinking gets replaced with right thinking. In other words, ugly thinking, bad thinking, negative thinking from the devil, the, the God of the world and the, the system out here. That type of thinking can be replaced with the way God thinks about everything. Now, my mind, my emotions, my heart are in tune with God and the way he sees things. That's what I want. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. <clears throat> you know, there's times when People at times think like the whole world is against them. <clears throat> but if God is for you, the Bible says that nobody can be against you. But you have to believe that. You have to believe that, not just know that it's said. God's Word says that, and I'm going to read the passage that that comes out of. But you have to not just know that it's said, you have to believe that it's true. If God is for you, Nobody can be against you. That's the absolute truth. So I, I want to read that verse of Scripture tonight in Romans chapter 8. And, uh, and I'm going to read the 31st verse. And it says this, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? question mark if God is for you who can be against you and I'm going to answer the question for you right now if God is for you then nobody no thing no God of the world and the world's thinking nothing can be against you but here's the thing and I just said it and I'm repeating it on purpose it's not enough that you know that God said that it's not enough you have to do what you have to do to truly believe that that's true. Because there's all kinds of things in life that'll come after you and work overtime to try to convince you that that is not true. I'm telling you by experience. Over 40 years of living for God, developing a relationship with God, that relationship is getting stronger by the day. I'm telling you today. Nobody can be against me. Nobody. Because I'm convinced that God is for me. Now I want to end this message tonight with what the Apostle Paul said in this same passage a few verses down, starting with verse 37. He said this. He said, In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Now watch this. Paul says this. For I am convinced. That word convinced there, one of the definitions or part of the definition of the word convinced is that you can't be talked out of. Paul said here, I'm convinced. You cannot talk me out of what I'm fixing, to, what he said right here. You can't talk me out of this. That neither death nor life angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me 
from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, I'm convinced that there's nothing in the visible and seen realm, no matter what happens, no matter what I face, no matter what I come up against, no matter what other people do to me in my life. Paul said, I'm convinced I cannot be talked out of it. How could he say that? If you look at Paul's history and all the things that he went through, man, there were some times, especially in his early years of his walk with God, when, man, the devil did everything to convince him that walking with God was not true. Everything. The Bible says that the Apostle Paul in his day, he was in deaths often. Deaths, plural, often. Difficult times. In jail. Thrown in jail. Because he was trying to preach the word and get the information, the, the, the veiled gospel that had covered the eyes of people and blinded people, and they were perishing as a result of it, like we read earlier. He was trying to get the good news revealed in the hearts of people. And as a result of that, the enemy worked overtime to convince other people that what he was doing was not true. And so there were many opportunities that he had to not be convinced, to be talked out of the truth of God's word. You and I have many opportunities to be talked out of. But the longer we walk, no matter how intense things get at different times, God wants us to become, as the Apostle Paul was, that we're convinced that nothing in the seen realm, nothing out there in the world, is going to change the way that I think and my trust and confidence in God. I'm going to continue to change the way I think, and it's going to get stronger, but I'm not going backwards and start reverting back to thinking about old ways of thinking from the past because all there is is death and destruction back there. What there is with God today is life today and life tomorrow and blessing and not cursing all the days of my life. I mean, that's a win-win. I mean, no matter how difficult at times things in the world can be, God will see you through everything. Paul said that here. I'm telling you today. That's how great God is. My encouragement to you in this word is to be willing to change the way that you think about things. Remember where I told you that in the world, so much of the time, people say, show it to me and I'll believe it. God says, if you want to see it, you have to believe it first. If you want to see things manifested, you want to see healing in your body come in the form of healing from God, you have to develop a belief system first. You have to believe it to be able to receive it. And if you don't believe it, and you just know that it's said, it's good that you know that it's said, but it's not enough. You have to stay with it until you truly believe that everything that God said is for you from in His Word, and it's for you, and it's not against you. He's, if God be for you, who can be against you? The answer to that question is nobody and no thing, and no circumstance, and no situation. That's my encouragement to you tonight in this Word uh, the enemy of wrong thinking. And, and I bless you with it. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you that as these words go out, as people take these scriptures and as they meditate on this, this word will not return void, but it will accomplish what you've set it out to accomplish. We bless you, we honor you, and we give you praise concerning that today in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, it's a joy to bring the word to you. If you have if you have a desire tonight to either honor God in the tithe or sow seed into the ministry in any way, we just give you the opportunity. And, and on the screen there, you'll see three different options in, in your ability to, to be able to give. And, and just do that. And, and, and we believe that you'll be blessed because the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive because giving produces receiving. That's what God said. And if God said it, then we believe it. So we encourage you to do that, and, and we're giving you that opportunity tonight. Hey, I just want you to remember that next Wednesday night, the 27th of May, we'll be live here in the service, and you don't want to miss it. If you're part of Gates of the City here, we'd love to see you here. We won't have children's ministry that night. That'll be our first service back. It's going to be kind of a, 
you know, just a progressive opening in, as, as we slowly come back in. There won't be children's ministry that night, but, but we'll have service here in the building. So hope to see you then. Bless you. Be blessed. Be safe. And God's blessing on your life.